Saucy Fear with 1591 Greece Gladiators here in the Milstein Division. The winners of the Finger Lake and the New York Tech Valley Regional. Amazing robot to see over here with the underneath the bumper intake, pivoted shooter, amazing robot. Really excited to walk down here, here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Let's start things off, Justin. Talk about the path of the note, your intake to start off. All right, so as you said, we got an under the bumper intake right here and it, can pick, it picks up from on the floor. The note goes under here, travels up through here and into these feeder rollers, where then it hits, there's beam brakes right in there that you can see if I cross it, they turn orange, that means that we have a note. And then when it will stay there, and when we're ready to shoot, we have, uh, it shoots out of these rollers right here, and this arm on this big pivot arm right here, and it pivots to whatever position it needs to be. We have uh, the camera that will be talked about more later over here that reads the April tag and puts the position of the arm to where it needs to shoot. Now, let's go back to your intake real quick. Talking about this wrap that you guys have over your wheels, you also have a uh, rubber wheels, it seems like at the bottom, but yep. tell me about these wrap and why you guys decided to use those. All right, so they're wrapped up because these, these like the metal rollers are slippy themselves. So we added some grip to them, so it just grabs onto the note and really takes it up in there because it, we had it at a point where it didn't have any of this and it would like slip through it and go real slow through it. So all this grip tape just helps it be perform a lot better. Are you able to see the uh, intake pick up a note? So it's driving, it goes under here and it just goes right in like that. And as you see, it hit the beam brake. It tells us that we have a note in the robot. Now, whenever you're intaking, does your arm automatically just move to the set position or? Uh, yeah, if the arm is up in a different position at all, the intake buttons drive it to its zero position so it's ready to be intaked. Now, let's talk about that pivoting system that you have yes. for your shooter. How does it work? Angles, let's talk about that. All right, so it's got big chains right here and down in there are two gearboxes on either side with the uh, absolute encoder on one of the side to tell us the true position of the arm. So, if you want to go to, we can do amp position. Sure, no, the new one. So this is our amp position. It'll be like this. These feeders go right into the amp like this. And then uh, uh, these rollers will be on and then I just shoot it down into it like that. So these rollers, shoot it out right, straight down into the amp. And then uh, that's pretty consistent with that. You go to stove again. More. And um, now we just saw uh, your amp position, but it also is it possible for you guys to pick up the note from the source as well at the top? Or? Oh yeah, source source position, source and take. Hold on, do it. So this is our source and take position. Uh, it, so we drive straight up to the source, and it just goes right in like that, and then we have the note all ready to play. And then for shooting, are you do you shoot uh, one way or can you shoot both ways? Um, mainly only one way. It shoots from any position in this area. We can get it to do it, but it's not it's not what we prefer. That's understandable. Now, Leora, talking about the electronics that you guys have, it seems like you guys have a something is missing over here. But also talking about the electronics <laughs> that you have. Um, so yeah, the thing that we kind of just recently unplugged over here was our trap blower. Um, recent recent addition just for Worlds, uh, trying to see if that will um, work to blow open the trap so we can shoot it in from the ground. So that's what these bars are here for. But um, to talk about kind of the rest of the electrical board, um, hmm. I guess we can start with motors. For our shooter up here, we're trying the, the new Vortexes. Um, brand new trying out for this season. We were going to try them for the swerves themselves. We've got the rev uh, three inch modules, but we decided to go with the safe route. We were hearing some um, 
things from other teams and we knew that going with the regular Neos and the Neo 550s we did that last year. Um, so we went with those this year, which means we had a whole lot more Spark Maxes. So Kylie, if you could put the arm up, I could show um, something that our electrical board has a lot of is 3D printed parts. So you can see along the sides here, uh, we actually put our Spark Maxes upright along a DIN rail with 3D printed um, DIN rail mounts from the team Celtex. Um, and then also on the uh, 550 Spark Maxes with the uh, encoder board, we had a problem that they would always fall out of the Spark Maxes because they wouldn't hold in very tight. So uh, Celtex also had 3D printed encoder um, kind of mounts that would hold it in place. So that was a problem we were having last year where they would come unplugged and then we would lose our steering wheel, uh, which was kind of important. So with those 3D printed mounts, we're able to hold those in a lot better and they have been working awesome. Um, you can also see this big orange 3D printed box in here that is holding four of our orange pies, which are powering our four cameras that we use for vision. Um, so if Kylie, our programmer, wants to go and talk about our cameras, uh, I think our vision system is really cool. It looks really awesome. <laughs> so we have four cameras that are operated by um, four orange pies. We have the left and right ones, and we have the note tracking one. Then here in the front, we have our front camera, which is our main one that we use for April tags. So uh, these three help with localization. And this back one right here helps us track notes, which is especially important in auto. When if like if a team um, moves a note over, doesn't intake it, but it's still there, we can go get that note anyways, without it having to be in that fixed position. And what software are you using with all four? Orange pies. We're using Photon Vision. Photon Vision, and that's been working great for you guys. Mm -hmm. Love to see that, especially with it being open source, a bunch of resources out there. Now, you also have LEDs. Is there any other functions those LEDs do, or is it just, just the orange? So our LEDs are mostly to show to the drivers that um, we have a note in us, especially because like the vision is so hard. Um, we also have some decorative ones, like when we climb, it's able to flash um, white and it also shows us um, how we're preparing for a match. So uh, flashing green means we're ready. Um, solid green means like good to go. So diagnostics and everything yeah. like that. Perfect. Blinking for the amp as well. Yeah, <laughs> nice. amplifying. Congratulations, are you great success. Good luck here in, in Worlds.